Well, hello. Um, I know this is not the normal opening to the uh, the JT Follows JC Live uh, show podcast, um, but we had some technical difficulties with the stream. Um, my podcast camera did not record, and also um, the typical uh, TikTok live stream also did not save. So. Luckily, my girl Amanda saved the day. She screen recorded most of the live feed, at least from Luke's side. And the only problem is we caught it midstream. So Luke's kind of in mid-thought when we start. But we're talking science and magic being the same thing. Also, both of, both of them being pretty evil. And um, But anyways, I think it's an interesting discussion. I think you guys will enjoy it. Anyways, God bless and enjoy. Going back, we'll give you more knowledge. And they ended up giving him the Enochian language. And then as they went further along in this, they started revealing themselves as not angels, but demons. But they were way too far down the rabbit hole or whatever. But this guy was a major influence on science, a major influence on that kind of Elizabethan era. But he uh, he kind of sets the prototype for these people who have this thirst for knowing how the universe works and trying to manipulate it and going into this kind of uh, occult realm to get this information. And what the, the people who they work with, uh, the, the, the entities, say, uh, through mirrors and through these different things, they present themselves as angels or, or you know, uh, good. And then as, as they start to unfold actual mysteries of the universe, how things really work, you find out that they're demons. So basically, you, you, know, you have a uh, fallen angel, demon, whatever, that knows how the universe works because they were involved in creation or that you know they're outside of space and time proper so they understand how it works and these people to show themselves worthy end up having to do all of these unspeakable kind of things to consort with them to get this information so you mentioned the secret societies yeah you learn these things in secret societies but a lot of times that's information that's been passed down from somebody who at one point was literally talking to fallen angels or demons yeah yeah for sure it's it's interesting you kind of say that too where it's like they, at first they're good but you know it's like really when it's funny it's like obviously we know like we know the voice of the good shepherd and we won't follow strangers but it's like they're only good because they're offering something you want right you know what i mean like that's the only reason they're actually good but you would need, instantly know they're bad when they're trying to get you to do bad things right in order to get in order to get knowledge but it's like yeah so to, to that end it's like they should know but i mean of course, what see this is where you get into like uh, knowledge is power. Knowledge is you know knowledge is good. I mean, like yeah, it's obviously when you look at a god like Apollo, it's like he's the god of knowledge and you know illumination and all this light and everything good, prophecy and medicine and plagues, of course, um, right. and young men. Um, but you know that's an inside. But yeah, the point is, is like that they get deceived, but it's like obviously they allowed themselves to be deceived because. The signs were probably early on where these things are not good. Right. And I think my area of uh, research has been and where I would want to go with the conversation, but I would like to touch more on the occult things you've been researching. But uh, today's science is the same thing. And, uh, you know, the, we, we, we've been basically programmed to believe that, you know, even though we're on a tiny speck in an infinite universe, uh, the people today have figured out how and when the universe happened. <laughs> what we're doing here, how man came to be. What a ridiculous claim. I'm sorry. It's the most ridiculous claim ever. That, And I'm sure it's happened before in science. And they've said at the time, you know, we're on the back of an elephant or we're here or we're there. Because if, if you really want to control the people, you have to make them believe what you want them to believe about what they're doing here. And that these people are the gatekeepers. They have the access to the information. They, uh, you can trust them and it always ends up going from like <clears throat> origins, you know, how we got here, what we're doing here, uh, what the meaning of life is into something they're selling you or making you do. And so we have this very interesting, uh, marriage between science and magic and, uh, whether it was the old astronomers or the magis or the, you know, even the priests uh, of Egypt, they, they had some sort of magic, right? They were like the magicians of the time. And these people would be the scientists and the magicians. And what's amazing is that it's the same thing today. I call them the priests of the religion of science. It's the same thing. It's a group of people who are explaining to the world the things that we can't perceive 
as humans, we have limited sensory perception. We have a limited amount of time we've been able to see this. So they're literally explaining to you what you need to believe about this reality. And unsurprisingly, the information that they're propagating supports the agenda of the king and the queen. And this is what the magicians and the scientists have always done. And it's just today, it's a lot slicker and a lot more official looking. Um, but this is, uh, it's not new because the devil knows how to manipulate us. He's been doing the same thing. He just does it again every 80 years. We all die off. The next group comes in. He doesn't tell us our history. He does it again. He's not creative. And this is a very effective way to basically control the headspace of the average person by getting them to believe that you know and that you're in a meaningless universe or that they're God or w whatever agenda they need to for you to uh, just fall in line. Yeah, 100%. Well, I think that, I think the one way that, of course, you, you know, you've noticed we've all picked up on is the fact that when there's this new scientific discovery, what, what direction does it lead you? Does it lead you closer to a creator or does it lead you further away? And I think that's ultimately when you see that, like, when you find out thin evidence they have of what they're, t what they're telling you, it's like, you want us to believe there's not a creator. The, you, you, like, what you're trying to say is not actually true. It's not, it's, it's a theory. It's a weak one. And as a, but it always airs on the, on the one side of, hey, we're, we evolved from slime. This, right. this, this, world, this universe is, is a, a gajillion years old, and we know this. Just trust us. Right. And it's like, that's to say, you, you, you put, you're putting your faith in these men. And the reason people do it is because they, don't, they want to hear that there's no God, so therefore they're not accountable to anybody. Right. That's why and it's... That's why it's a, that's why it's an attractive message for people. Again, that's what I'm saying. Like when you when you're contacting, you know, evil entities, and at first they're good. They were never good. Right. They were telling you what you wanted to hear, and now eventually you find out that there's you know it's the, it's literally like the Faustian bargain. You make a deal with these people, and then when you get to the end, you're like, wait a minute. Right. I made a horrible decision. <laughs> right. Which is crazy. You say that because that John D. documentary I sent you it ends up on. They keep pushing him to do these kind of uh, crazy things. And the last one, him and this other guy he was doing the scrying with, the angels request that they do a wife swap. They wanted them to commit adultery. And so, like a very specific, terrible way, lewd way, they ended up doing it. But they ended up doing this wife swap, and then they realized that it was just demons messing with them the whole time. But uh, So, the evolution thing, you mentioned that coming from the slime. Uh, I posted a video of uh, Jeffrey Dahmer saying that he uh, uh, basically didn't know there was a creator uh, until he got his hands on some Christian science material and then he realized evolution was a lie. And he said that, I, I thought there was no point to this reality. I just was, I could do whatever I want to. And what's crazy about the evolution agenda is it's it, the entire thing, the entire order from creation to what we're doing here is antithetical to the biblical narrative. So God said he spoke this reality into existence. Speaking is beautiful. We're having a communication right now. Uh, you know, you can sing, you can, you can tell somebody you love them. Speaking is a beautiful act of creation. No, it's an explosion. So instead of a beautiful created intended information act, it was an explosion. Uh, instead of the uh, earth starting first, you know, the universe started first, then the sun, then the earth was last. You, you, you just end up with the, the opposite uh, of the... Well, the mechanism of how the universe gets here, how the earth gets here. And then, rather than being made in the image of God, we're animals, right? We're, we're animals. That's what they teach us. And Jesus would talked about survival of the meekest. He who is greatest among you needs to be the servant. Uh, you know, if somebody sues you for your jacket, give them your pants. Uh, forgive everybody. Forgive everybody everything. Lend money to people that you're not going to get it back. He taught about this, uh, this uh, reality that was just antithetical to this idea of being a scavenging animal. Now, going back to mm -hmm. Dahmer, you could argue that evolutionarily he won. He was winning. Yeah, him. Well, Go ahead. Survival of the fittest, right? Right. Uh, uh, you're more fit. He was more fit than the 13 yeah. guys that he ate or whatever. Uh, you know, mm -hmm. and then the H-man in Germany, same thing. He thought he was culling the population. He thought he was doing nature a favor. They were the, they were the higher evolved. Uh, this... The Del, uh, Dylan Klebold, uh, Eric Herr, whatever the guy's names were for Columbine, natural selection shirt the guy wore. And he was running around doing this because you're taught that you're an animal, right? Yeah. You're an animal. And check this out. I'm going to not like, I'm not going to go here because I'm, uh, I'm going to do this very lightly. But one of the things you hear for, um, you know, why 
uh, homosexuality is, is natural in nature, we hear this all the time, is because it's natural in the animal kingdom, right? You hear this all the time. Yeah. But we're not animals. Yeah. It, it's so ingrained in our reality. Like, people literally believe at a base level that we're animals because that's what we were taught. Yeah. So it's, it's the antithesis to what God intended, it, this idea of being promiscuous and opportunistic stealing there's no morals animals eat their babies animals you know if the baby isn't good they discard the baby animals do all kind of things that we don't do we're not animals is my point and we were taught people, that we and, were and people but, still and people do those those other horrible things too and yeah so like that's that's where that gets you that's where that takes you and and why do we believe it why do we believe that we are, I mean, largely, why do we believe the universe is 14 billion years old and we are just mutated animals because of science? Yeah, yeah right. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, it's, it, these are these are the gatekeepers. But again, it's like they're trying to manipulate you. And here and, and maybe we should move this back into the to this the science magic argument. And of course, I was I was telling Luke and I kind of been on this kick for a little bit. And of course, being the month of October and everything's magical lately, you know, tis the season for, um, you know, Goose go goblins and um, witches. I was watching the press. I was rewatching the Prestige, mm. and the Prestige was was very striking because I was looking at. I was trying to really read into it. And of course, Christopher no Nolan, good director, probably major occultist. Yeah, <laughs> but he in. but his he's message in. was nice and subtle. But the but the movie the 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 uh, the, the Prestige was about. You had these magicians, and they were mo mostly illusionists, right? So these guys were the illusionists. Well, at one point, uh, they're looking for a uh, Hugh Jackman is looking for a real trick because he's trying to he's trying to like basically go toe to toe with Christian Bale. He's got this awesome trick. Well, he goes to Tesla, and they make a very dis distinct difference between Tesla and what they're doing because they're magicians, but they don't say, "Oh, he's a scientist." No, they literally say he's a wizard, and they make it clear that it's it's not in, it's not set in like you know just like hyperbole. It I, 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 hyperbole, but they're yeah. saying he's he's a wizard. These guys are magicians, and I thought I found that very fascinating. Is that that there was a difference, and then of course when you start to look into, you know, the person of Nikolai Tesla, that they wrote books about him being a wizard. You know, he was wow. not he was not just a scientist. Now there's a lot of things that, like theories that he had, and of course the way he he came about getting the theories, he talks openly about it. He could like basically he was talking about um. What is it? Uh, sleep. Uh, what is it? Um, sleep paralysis. He was getting. He was accepting mm. these things. He was. He was literally getting like these ideas in picture form in his head, and then he'd go build the machine. And so he's all about the sacred geometry, and so it's very. It's very interesting that the magician is trying to sh to sell an illusion, and he's trying to trick you. And so one of the main quotes in that movie, and of course I I love it, and I think this is this is so clear in our society is when he's um, Michael Caine is explaining the, the, the three steps of a magic trick. And he was saying, you know, so there's, um, I forgot, I forgot, I forget what they're called, but like the one is called like the turn, you know, you have the first one, then you have the turn. He's talking about making something disappear. And he's like, but you won't clap because you got to bring it back. And then he says, and he's like, you're going to, you're going to look and you're going to try to see the trick. He's like, but you're not going to see it because you don't want to know. And it's like so he's really saying you're going you're like you're going into this this place to be to see magic to be tricked, and that's what happens because you want to be tricked. Right. And I think that's where we get into it. So you have the the wizard. I mean, the people who are doing like the real science that's it's it's hard to explain. Nobody understands it. Well, I think Luke and I came to the conclusion most of these people out here, like your Bill Nye's and your um, Neil deGrasse Tyson's, Neil deGrasse Tyson. these are magicians. They're right. selling you a load of bull. And people want to believe it, right? But they don't know. They don't know how CERN works. These right. guys don't know. These guys don't know how any of this stuff works. Right. But it's like, but you know what? They know what Tesla did was real, but they can't explain it. They can't explain it to you. But they can trick people who want to be tricked. But guys like Luke who actually look into this and look, look behind the curtain, and you realize, wait a minute, these guys don't know what they're talking about. Right. So yeah, okay, like nine things there. What you just said, they don't know what they're talking about. I all the time engage with atheists in the chat 
with the you know all my videos i've got all these 500,000 follower 1 million follower scientists you know playing my mitochondrial e videos and the out of africa videos and just blasting me clearly you don't understand the science you mean you don't think i read the book and understand what you were taught of mm -hmm. course i question the system but these guys that uh, blast me what they don't realize is that one thing is consistent with science it's that it's wrong always <laughs> they they come up with a theory they come up with an idea they come up with an evidence it lasts for a year it lasts for five years it lasts for a hundred years and then it ends up being wrong they've been wrong how old the universe is how the universe got here you know they talk about uh, many worlds they talk about the um uh multiverse they talk about abiogenesis they talk about uh, monkeys rafting on, um, you know, uh, vegetation across the ocean. They talk about uh, octopuses coming to the earth on asteroids or, or meteorites. It, it, it's just, it's this fanciful story and it's always changing. And so, you know, I always say that it's pseudoscience and misinformation because what, what you end up getting is that they, they, they force you to believe them and to not question them. And then at the same time, they tell you that, well, but good science is wrong. And so what this causes, <clears throat> if you research cognitive dissonance, cognitive dissonance is that your brain can't, your brain is very binary in its thinking. And so it can't reconcile right and wrong, truth and non-truth. It can't reconcile both sides of the arguments. And so science, they tell you, this is about, this is part of the magic that they do. They tell you that uh, they're good when they're wrong because when they're wrong they you know show that the the next scientist has a better idea so it's okay for them to be wrong but then out of the other side of their mouth they tell you that you can't question them right we just saw this whole trust the science movement and science denial i did a show on youtube if you guys want to check it out it's in my bio um on my youtube channel called uh something about the james webb telescope and and, and showing how they do their magic but in that uh, a guy named eric Lerner, who they hate they call him a serial Big Bang denier. So basically, if you question the system, you're a science denier, you're anti-science, and uh, so you go, okay, I can't question them, but it's also totally okay for them to be wrong, right? So when you're in a place of cognitive dissonance, when they teach you a truth and a non-truth, it discombobulates your conscious mind and the workflow of, your, of the neuroscience of your mind. And what happens is you can no longer trust your intuition. You can no longer trust what you what you deem logical. Well, you have to rely fully on the authority and the information they give you. And then, because people don't want to look stupid, it's not that they get it. It's that they say, "Well, they said this, so I I believe it, and I'm a good mm -hmm. citizen." And so they just they can't, they literally can't think critically. I mean, I just want, I want you guys to think about this for a second. The universe didn't exist, and then. Everything that is in this universe came into existence through some sort of rapid expansion. And the space was expanding into what? We don't know. And then slowly things started becoming more organized. We see entropy. We see things getting worse, trying to take care of your house, trying to take care of your car, trying to take care of your body. Things just constantly get worse. But they say things slowly you know, become uh, through this natural process of this residual explosion. And then they say that the, uh, the moon... They didn't know where the moon came from, and then they did, and then that theory was wrong, and now they say a Mars-like planet hit the Earth and it formed into the moon. You, 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 you can't look at the moon and think that there was some crazy crash and it slowly turned into a perfect sphere that's tidally locked with the Earth and uh, you know is made of reflective dust. Where did this dust come from? And it's exactly the same size in the sky from our perspective as the sun is. You, you can never look at these things and go, yeah, that's, that makes sense. And your brain would never let you. The reason why you believe it is because of this cognitive dissonance that they have you in where half the time or all the time they're wrong. And it's okay if them to be wrong. But you also can't question them. And because you can't reconcile it, you just blindly agree to it. And this is part of their magic. Yeah, well, you know, I think the one thing you you mentioned, I, I watched, uh, I saw one of your videos pop up in my feed uh, recently, and it was the the one where you're talking about the comments, uh, the comments, and and like how they, and this this obviously has driven me nuts for years, is they present a theory 
with with no uh, with no disclaimers that it's a theory, and they present right. it like it's a fact, and they do this over and over again. And so, so when you see somebody do that, that's how I know not to trust this person. You know, because I like to, you know, I like to give the disclaimers of, hey, listen, look into this yourself. This is what I think. Right. And you make up your own mind if it makes sense or not. But even I'll, I'll, I'll maybe I'll pump up my, my last video. I did my little Amerigo, uh, Amerigo or Al, mm. Alberigo Vespucci. Great video. And so the funny part is like, so I had a bunch of people arguing about me. So so long story short, I said Vespucci, the, the country is not, you know, these these two continents are not named after him. The, the ev evidence is very it's flimsy at best. And I said, of course, it just so happens that in South America, they worship a snake deity that actually his name is Amaraku. And they had different spellings of it where it actually literally was like one letter off from America. And so when you realize the Spanish landed in South America, not North America, the kind of South Amer America was likely called America to these people. And then later they named it North South America. You know, so because they, they worship this snake all across the feathered serpent, all across the uh, the continent. But more to the fact is, OK, so I said, in, even in my video, I said it's likely because of this. So yeah. I said that was my take. And of course, my conclusion is, yes, it wasn't named after some guy. It was named after some old serpent. And then so so people are trying to expect me to have equal weight of my evidence versus the evidence of the history books that have none. Right. Like so. So they don't. They never presented it to you as it's a theory that this place has been named after Amerigo right. Vespucci. Right. When no, it's fact. There would be clear documentation. I said the absence of of a rock sod evidence right. is proof it's not true. Right. Because because he said, like I said, here's the, here's the one thing that people need to remember is that he sailed. He was first of all, he's not the Span first Spanish explorer to get to the new new world. Columbus was. Whether you say it was an island or whatever, it doesn't matter. He wasn't the first. And then when he went, he literally went with the Spanish. So uh, Alfonso de Ojeda was with him, and he was writing about the people calling the place America. It was like, it just stands to reason that if they changed the name to a something to, to name it after a guy, the Spanish would have wrote about it, right? Wouldn't the Spanish of all people said, hey, the crown was so pleased with Al Alberigo that they changed his name and the continent's name to America. Wow. But they didn't. So therefore, like you said, so so the point is, they should have put in our books. This is a theory, and it's right. and it's a garbage one. It's not right. true. Like, so, and I said, a, so I said, so, so what's what's more likely to be true is that the Spanish didn't write about it because they did it and they just didn't think it was worth writing about, or they didn't write about it because the the place was already named America when they got there. So I loved that video. I actually we had a uh, we went to our friend's house a couple nights ago, and they're uh, very critical thinking uh people we had we had a really long discussion just about everything going on in the world and I actually ended the discussion with that uh that americu thing it makes total sense to me i mean the thing about columbia like columbus is it's possible that his name wasn't actually columbus right isn't that did you look hmm. into that at all like his name i've, I've seen else? i've seen a little bit I, I, of course i had a lot of people in the, in the comments telling me all kinds of stuff about columbus that i i didn't know right. so uh christopher columbus that's where they say they got the name columbia uh, Columbia is Britannica. Columbia is Ishtar. Columbia is Semiramis. Columbia mm -hmm. is this archetype of the, you know, a fertility, war, magic. She's always been magic as well. Isis, yeah. uh, you know, they've all, it's, and that would tra trace back to Babylon, not to go, I know we want to get there at one point, but, uh, you know, this idea of this, this uh, feminine character that would be worshipped. But so they named uh, Columbia after Columbus, and that was probably not even his real name. And now we have the District of Columbia, which is the capital of our nation, which is her district. And I don't know if you know this or not, but they have a rule there. She's on top of the dome, the uh, Capitol mm -hmm. Dome, where the 1-6 thing happened. And uh, underneath the dome is the apotheosis of George Washington, where he yep. is. It's, you've seen that, right? Crazy oh, yeah. uh, occult. The uh, Washington Monuments on the other side, it's 555 feet. Uh, so times 12 inches is 6,660 uh, inches. So you've mm -hmm. got the uh, you've got the male uh, representation of the the phallus member. Uh, this is the idea of uh, Osiris and Isis, and that he was dismembered, and that the she got his phallus and was able to impregnate himself with it, impregnate herself with it, and that's how Horus was birthed. So this like 
immaculate, not so immaculate conception. Um, but anyway, so that's the dome, that's the phallus, and she's on top of the dome. And there's a rule in Washington, D.C. that no building can be taller than the goddess. So, and there's no skyscrapers in Washington, D.C. Every building yeah. is below the goddess because she's above the city, right? So yeah. we've got Columbus, and then we've got this Americo thing, and it would make total sense to me that the Mayan did name it, and that's what it was. Because an interesting thing, if you've researched Manly P. Hall at all, he talks about there being a flood, that what Atlantis is, the story of Atlantis is the great flood legend just told through um, te you know telephone game kind of retelling mm -hmm. of the story. But according to his research, and this is all the way through like to Solon, the Egyptian priest historian back in the day, um, there was a global dispersion. There was a global uh, civilization that was destroyed. And what is the story? The gods were mad, right? They were too technologically mm -hmm. yeah. advanced. Where do we get this? <laughs> this is the same story that's going on the, uh, with the flood. So they got washed in. But anyways, where do we get the name Atlantis? The Maya also came up with Atlantis. People think it was at the Atlantic Sea and all these different things. But uh, Atel is what that na the name of the land that was washed into the sea. And this was the Mayan version of the name of it. So very likely the Mayans named the pre-flood civilization of Atlantis and named America, which is, the you know, if you've researched... Um, was it Manly P. Hall or Sir Francis Bacon, the Atlantis to America? I think, to, I think, both, I think both of them wrote about it. I think, I, I think um, Sir, Van, Sir Francis Bacon wrote about what you're talking about, though. Mm. And so uh, this idea that America is the new Atlantis, so it makes sense that they called it a tell, and then they call America uh, a Meru, and it would be the you new know, Quaxicotl is Satan, the serpent, the great serpent. And mm -hmm. what did they require of uh, their people to sacrifice their children, right? So they had these truncated pyramids. So crazy, you guys. They had truncated pyramids. Uh, you know, if you've seen that they have the same architecture all around the world, explain that through evolution. That totally destroys evolution that they were super advanced 5,000 years ago. According to the official narrative, civilization was just, we were basically out of Africa doing nothing, running around hitting each other with clubs. And then, it, meanwhile, you know, these beautifully uh, designed uh, it, marbles in, of engineering are sprouting up all around the world with the same design concepts and the design is a truncated pyramid and why a truncated pyramid because the uh the capstone is what descends and sits on the pyramid right yeah. the capstone is the all-seeing eye right which is which is an affront and a blasphemy uh but it's lucifer and you even see this in the katie perry video uh dark storm where she stands on the the truncated pyramid with her wings and she, you know, she sprouts her wings and she calls this storm from heaven or whatever. But anyways, the Maya would sacrifice their children on the truncated pyramid, which was basically the unholy of holies, uh, where Lucifer would sit on the capstone. So yeah, America, uh, America, uh, Quaxicotl, the Maya, it's a global civilization, the flood. This is the real history, you guys. This is the real history. And this thing about coming out of Africa and us, you know, um, the Neanderthals were different and then the Denovisans and we, you know, we were all different, but we're all, they, here's another cognitive dissonance for you. They teach you that we all come from one woman, mitochondrial Eve. This was genetically, they traced back up to that point. They believed in something called convergent evolution, where over here you had a human and over here you had a human, over here you had a human, and we were all different kinds of humans. Well, the damnedest thing happened. They started looking at the genealogy, at the genetics, and they traced it back, and we're all related to the same woman. So they don't go, okay, yeah, there's Eve, although they did call her Eve, which is funny. They, they, they like science hates that they did that, but they go, no, no, no. It's just that every other, it's just that every other one died out. Every other one of them died out. Only her bloodline lived. So they were, they were, she was with this and that. And there was a bunch of convergent humans. The rest of them just died. Eve exists, and uh, you know, so they have all these workers. They did. They did. They did die in a flood. <laughs> yeah, that's true. That's actually true. Yeah, they died in a big flood. <laughs> yeah, okay, they're right. <laughs> they died in the flood. <laughs> but um, the, what you end up with is, uh, and I made a couple other notes of the wizards and magician things that I wanted to get back to. But you end up with uh, the things that we don't know that we can't know. We're told what to believe about them by the people who have more information than we do. Access to better instrumentation, access to higher learning access to whatever and we have to blindly trust these people and this is how man has been controlled for a very long time and a big thing that i'm trying to do on my channel now is get people to see 
that we've been lied to again. The people back then, do you think that the people in Egypt when they were, you know, or, or the Maya when they were sacrificing their children or in Egypt, whatever was happening, you think that if you went and told them, yo, these priests, they don't, they're, they're not talking to God or they're talking to the devil and, you know, you, you were had. You think people were like, thanks for setting me free. They'd have been like, no, they know, bro. Like if we would go back yeah. to Egypt and we would say these things, we'd be getting trolled on to Egypt TikTok back then too. <laughs> They might just kill us. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, might not be long. No, wait, you know, it's interesting. It was interesting you say to go back to um, the whole plume serpent thing. Was I? I was. You know, there's. there's it's so funny when people act like that. I, I didn't present enough evidence. It's like it's a nine. It's a ninety second TikTok, bro. There's there's a lot more there. But what they were actually saying was that that the legends from like the the Inca and the Maya. They're actually they were actually saying that that. The plume serpent, like the Quetzal, you know, Aztecs in Quetzalcoatl, they were saying that these guys came. It was they were like these these white skin, either they're real fair people, blonde hair. I think some of them had like red hair, and they were saying these these people came and they came from a place that was destroyed by a flood. Wow, that's literally what their legends say, which is which is very interesting. That these are the people who said, you know, they say built these pyramids, did all this right. stuff here, and it's like. So it's like that is a, that is pretty on the nose that these things are coming coming there to say say they escaped a flood. I mean, so if you if you're Manly P. Hall and obviously you don't want to believe in the one true God, I mean, you're going to say that's evidence of Atlantis. I mean, that's that's right. that's probably why they wanted to go there. But you know what's interesting is like like kind of what you were saying. So just think about the scientific narrative that gets busted into a million pieces when you actually start to think about like. The, su the, the subject I was talking about, Columbus, Amerigo Vespucci, in and, and, and 1492. And it's like, there was pyra massive pyramids over on the side of the ocean. Whether you, whether you believe that, you know, right. the, 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 the locals who said they didn't build them, built them or, or what. But the idea that man was not, you know, technology advanced enough to go across the Atlantic Ocean until 1492 even though there's these massive pyramids over there. Right. The people who built those pyramids could travel the seas, right? Right. I, I mean, I'm pretty sure that if you could build a massive pyramid, you could, if you look at what they did in Peru, they could build a good boat, I bet. I bet they, if they can make those, 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 uh, what is it? Um, those rocks that don't have any mortar, the mortarless walls right. with like megaton rocks, Right. With, you can't even fit a piece yeah, of paper in between. Gobekli, the, Gobekli, Tepli, yeah, you can't even Gobekli, fit a piece of paper in between those two stones. I bet you they could build build a pretty tight boat. What do you think? Right. Oh yeah. And it's so like, so what they're what you're really saying is like that that man was not you know like they they like to talk about this linear linear progression of man going at this 45 degree angle becoming more advanced. They don't have any explanations for this stuff, and I gotta say it's like I normally don't play the play the race card. But man, you should have seen some of the comments that I got in there when I was saying the natives called it this place, and they were saying like, the, you know, like the like the this is where the scientific view takes us that the people who were over who lived here before we got here were idiots, right? Like you know what I mean? They couldn't, they didn't know anything. Like I said, these people have obviously been living there for thousands of years, and they had a name for the place. And it's like one guy was saying, well, they didn't know it was a whole continent. What do you mean? <laughs> Like, what do you mean? They didn't know they were living on a, a big piece of land? Like, what do you mean? It's like, yeah, so they were saying, oh, they spoke different languages. They all worshiped the same God. Right. They all worshiped the same God. And and just to think about it like this is that if the, if the Inca and the Mayan and the Aztecs all say that they didn't build these structures, well, these things, so imagine that place was named well before they were born. Right. Just like we were, just like what we, it was kind of like, they asked us what this place is called. And, um, and we'd say, oh, it's, it's, it's the United States of uh, Snake. Wait, I like somebody, somebody's great comment was they called it the United Snakes. Yes. <laughs> and I was like, I was so, like but you know what you said? And they were like, well, there was people who spoke different languages. There. How would they all know what it was called? We called it this. We called it America because um, our boy's uh, name is pretty close to that. So uh, every, just about every civilization in their history has the story of the flood. And in almost every version, it's uh, the gods were mad, 
the guy built a boat. He saved the animal. I mean, it's Chinese. It's Native American. It's uh, obviously the, the version in Sumeria. You... <laughs> I'm so upset about this. I'm going to be on the... Um, shipwreck show podcast and I'm, I'm working on kind of a whole breakdown of this everything we were taught is wrong and our history is so beautiful and dynamic and it tells this it's the story of god like what's crazy is the the what does jesus say that they, they said don't let them cheer for you and he said if it wasn't if if they didn't cheer the rocks would cheer the rocks glorify God. The rocks praise God. The heavens declare the glory of God. Everything in this reality is telling his story. This is the story of Jesus who was made flesh. The flood was God's judgment on the earth. This thing happened and its evidence is everywhere. Every fossil, fossils are formed do you know how fossils are formed? Um, yeah, I know that they got to be obviously very quickly. They got to be buried very, very fast, and it's obviously yes. got to be a ton of weight. It's yes. got to happen because, very rapidly. Because if something dies, the scavengers get it, bacteria gets it, eats it up, dismembers it, d disarticulates it, it's gone. Every fossil. Yeah, if something died, if something died in your front yard, it would not turn into stone after uh, a million years. It would be gone yeah. in be gone. in a week. It would be gone. It would be gone. It would be disarticulated. And if the bone sat there, bacteria would eat it. It would. Eat. These things have to be encased, like Han Solo in Star Wars. Yeah. So uh, the, the fossils, the stones, the the, the the canyons. If you've ever driven through uh, I seventy in Colorado, or if you've ever been to the Grand Canyon, or if you've ever been to the Columbia Gorge, or if you've ever been to the Missoula uh, Flood Basin, uh, the Columbia River Gorge, or the Columbia Gorge. These things are all formed by a rapid, catastrophic flooding. Um, anyways, the whole story is, 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 it goes like this, okay? Something made this reality. There was a flood. There were uh, dinosaurs. Everybody tells the story of dinosaurs. Everybody has the story of dinosaurs in their culture. Everybody. China, Africa, uh, 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 Native Americans, Mesopotamia. They all have the story of, uh, of dinosaurs. And then... Giants, like everybody has these stories. So we, we were told a ridiculous lie through pseudoscience and misinformation by these scientists to get us to disbelieve our history. Because if you believe that there was a flood, then you believe in the Bible and you believe in God's judgment, right? You're not going to be doing that if, uh, if you believe in the flood. Let, let me read this really fast. I know you're familiar. Do you mind if I read the Bible, JT? I can't. Okay, so not at all, three, never. Uh, <laughs> so, <laughs> two Peter three. Above all, you must understand that in the last day, scoffers will come, scoffing and following their own evil desires. They will say, "Where is this coming?" He promised. Ever since our ancestors died, everything goes on as it has since the beginning of creation. Ready for this? But they deliberately forget that long ago, by God's word. The heavens came into being and the earth was formed out of water and by water. By these waters also, the world of that time was deluged and destroyed. Let me read this again. Above all, you must understand that in the last day, scoffers will come scoffing and following their own evil desires. They deliberately forget that long ago, by God's word, the heavens came into being and the earth was formed out of water and by the water, by these waters also, the world of that time was deluged and destroyed. This is our history. This is our actual history. And it's everywhere. It's everywhere you see. People are walking on mountains and they go, holy shit, excuse my language, that's a jellyfish. Why is there a jellyfish on the top of the mountain? This is insane. And they post a video on TikTok and everybody goes, there's a jellyfish on the top of the Rocky Mountains. This is like the flood. And science just comes out, no, no, no. Pay no attention to what you see with your eyeballs. Yeah. That jellyfish isn't on the mountain because of a flood. You're stupid. You're a science denier. This is plate tectonics. We have an answer for it. People are like, but now we get this. And the, the, I've got a guy that I'm email corresponding with who knew a guy in their town who had a Indian uh, Native American giant bones in his gift shop. And uh, the government people came and took it from them. Suits that had, they, they, they coerced them. They, they've absolutely covered up 
with the most ridiculous story ever, our true history. And I tell you what, if dinosaurs were here, hunted by humans, which happened, this is this is the story of the uh, you, you've heard the story of the um, the knight who goes and slays the, the the dragon. What does he get when he gets slays the dragon? Do you know the story? He, he slays the dragon. He gets something. A princess. He gets one. Well, be nice. So, <laughs> but he gets the gold. Like like even um, Jordan Peterson talks about it. C.S. Lewis talks about it. You got to go through the dragon to get the gold. That's where the treasure is. Well, what is this story actually telling? In the Middle Ages. The uh, in the dark ages in that time, medieval time, the king would pay knights to go get the terrible lizards who were terrorizing the village. They were terrorizing yeah. the village. They would get the people. So they would pay the most brave, chivalrous knights to go kill the dragon, and they would so they would get paid to do it. And this is where that story comes from. The Chinese. Uh, sorry, I'll let you talk in a second. But the uh, so. They land on Mount Ararat, and humankind uh, di migrates out from there in, in a circular, uh, you know, in, in a pattern out from there. So you end up getting closest to the Mesopotamia uh, civilized first. So, you know, we actually have the Fertile Crescent, Mesopotamia, 3100 BC, then India, and then it starts to go out. We get, the, we get China, we get the Americas. Well, if the dinosaurs that had come off the boat, the clean dinosaurs, I'm assuming there were, um, could run away from man because man was actually a predator that could kill them. Dinosaurs were running away from man. So as man uh, migrated east, the dinosaurs would have migrated east just outside of the, the reach of man, but then eventually they would have hit the ocean and the dinosaurs couldn't have migrated anymore. This is what happened when they made it to China. They took them a while to get from Mesopotamia to China, but when they got to China, the dinosaurs had nowhere else to go because they were hemmed in by the waters. So the Chinese have a much greater history of the dragons because it was a there was more there were more dragons per capita than we would have saw in places where the dinosaurs could have ran from them. It's one of their twelve animals. It's the it, 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 they have uh, what rat, lion, snake, sheep. They have and the dragon because it was a thing. Yeah. So my point is. Our history is the history of the Bible, and the Bible talks about it. But if they come out and they go, hey, guess what? Global flood. Whoa. People are going to be like, well, the Bible. And then if you go, but before the flood, there was a global dispersion, according to um, Manly P. Hall, that was highly technologically advanced. What does that do for the theory of evolution? What do giants having existed 5,000 years ago do for the theory of evolution? In my video, I said, shit's all over. And this is why. So instead, they, they've sold you a lie. You're an animal. You you know this. We we were cavemen, and we're getting smarter. We're devolving. Like the, literally, yeah. everything they're saying is the opposite of the truth. Yeah, no, no question. I think the one thing just to throw back to it though, that the real history is very interesting, and this is why history class is so boring in right. school because you know what? Version. These lies are boring. They're boring, and they're. You know what? That's what I'm saying. Like that's why America of Vespucci is a footnote in in your history book. They don't talk about him. There's you don't learn anything about it other than he was some guy who went over there and discovered this place. Even though he didn't discover it, people were already there, and then they named the place after him. It's a lie. It, it's a thin. It's a paper thin lie. Right. The real truth is that these people were out here building pyramids before he got there. Like we, they don't talk. They don't talk about that, do they? They they try to tell you. That Egyptians that who the Egyptians who built the pyramids didn't have a wheel. I mean, do you like really just think about that? Do you remember hearing that story like it was true when man discovered yeah. the wheel? Well, you know, it's, it's funny see because like I guess on that. I guess you know because probably because I was falling asleep most of history class. It would have been like I never I never really understood that they said that that the men. So they just think about this. So now they find all this stuff from Sumar. You know, so they're saying it's even probably older than Egypt. And whether it is or it isn't, I mean, it's point is it's probably built around the same time. They have all these these cuneiform tablets of all the things they knew. They said they were building aqueducts. They were building dams. Right. They are building uh, dikes. They were building. They had an advanced civilization. They knew about the, they knew about all about the earth. They knew about the seasons, the, the months They gave, gave us our 60 second like minutes, hours and all this kind of stuff literally what science says is these guys were just just wearing like loincloths five minutes before right. they went and just built right. like 
a more advanced civilization than they had in Europe till when? Right. Like when did when did Europe have something better than that? All right. So just think about that. So these are the people who came over to basically tell everybody on this side of the earth what to do. These people were living in the woods while they were building these massive pyramids over in Mesopotamia and they were doing it over in here. That does make it, it, it literally makes no logical sense and obviously makes no sense in an evolutionary right. paradigm where we're getting better, except for that time they did all this way cool stuff before we were before any but any any uh well any not non Atlantean came over here, <laughs> right? So, the uh, you you mentioned the the wheel and the cavemen. Ooh. Do you remember the movie Clan of the Cave Bears as a child? I don't think I saw that one. Mm. Man, Daryl Hannah. I, oh, okay. Uh, Maybe. <laughs> yes, yeah, really bad. Like, there was a scene, like a really sexual scene in it that I remember even seeing as a child and, like, it burned in my brain. The other day, I was, like, talking to Chloe about it and I pulled it up and it's, like, very, it's really bad. I can't believe that I watched that when I was probably seven or eight. But, anyways, it's the cavemen and they're, ooh, 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 and they're doing mm. these things. And it's just all propaganda. So, what. Um, and these are the kind of things that permeate our, you know, thoughts. Like cavemen were a thing. We've got the Geico commercials or whatever, but it just wasn't a thing. But they weren't cavemen. They were whatever, building, like you said, paper tight, non jointed, amazing Machu Picchu style Puma Punka buildings. Uh, they <laughs> we're not even. The point is, we're not evolving. We're not getting better. We're devolving. Adam and Eve lived a very long time. They were genetically perfect. Uh, they, there's something called genetic entropy, which I'm working on a video. I've got like nine videos that I'm working on. I got to finish one of them, but, uh, if there's a hundred mutations, every generation, so you are a hundred mutations worse than your parents. <clears throat> there are a hundred mutations worse than their parents. We have 3 million base pairs or maybe 3 billion. So it's not, it's a drop in the bucket, but it's adding up. The theory of evolution teaches that the three billion base pairs came about through some process that is antithetical to how reality actually works. We, 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 are, we are doomed by entropy. Everything's always seeking equilibrium. Things become disordered. They believe that, that they teach. So I'm telling you, it's, it's, I'm, I've drawn a line. I'm done with it. It's anti-truth. Being employed through pseudoscience and the use of misinformation. We are literally entropically degrading. If you, if, if you took this piece of paper of my notes that no one can read, and you copied this, okay? And then you copied it again, and then you copied it again, and then you copied it again, and you did this, I don't know, 200 times. How do you think the copy would look? Not, not better each time. The theory of evolution teaches that the longer I copy this, the more resolute it becomes it's anti-truth okay it's gonna grow legs after and we see <laughs> genetically we we see now we've studied this 100 mutations per year they, they've gotten it down to such a science they've developed something called the molecular clock you're gonna love this joe we haven't talked about this they've developed something called the molecular clock it's kind of like carbon dating and what it does is it goes well we know there's 100 mutations per generation and so we don't know what, like, if, if you, see if I can explain this. If we knew that there were 100 mutations per generation and we have 3 million base pair now, we still couldn't figure out how long we've been here because we have no idea how many base pair we started with, right? Does that make sense? I don't know if I've lost mm -hmm. you. But so we know we have 100 mutations per generation and we know we have 3 billion base pairs now. We don't know how many there were at the beginning. Was there 6 billion? Was there 10 billion? Was there 12 billion? Nobody knows. So what they did to calibrate the molecular clock is they looked at the difference between human and chimp, the human and chimp genome, and they said at 100 mutations per uh, generation, how long would it take to get from here to where we're at? And this is how they, denay, uh, this is how they dated uh, mitochondrial Eve and Y chromosomal Adam, entirely based on the phylogenic tree. So if we didn't diverge from chimp, if, you know, diverge from pre-chimp, whatever, their clock is totally wrong. They're teaching you to believe something that science in no way supports, that our history in no way supports, that intuition in no way supports, that logic in no way supports. 
and they're doing it intentionally as the antithesis to the God of the Bible narrative. Who do they work for? Who are they working for that they're set out specifically to disprove the timeline, the mechanism, the chain of events, uh, and the intention listed in the Bible? They're working for, I believe, the father uh, of lies, uh, the enemy of God. So, anyway, sorry, go ahead. Well, how, how often uh, how often does uh, mutations end up um, with, like, magnetic powers or, um, you know, maybe, like, claws, um, ma- animatium claws? Or, I mean, because... Because only in comic books do these mutations actually turn into something good. Right. <laughs> right. I mean, how much more advanced are we since we get a hundred of these a year? I mean, what have I we? Just, what have, what's, the, what's the last good one we got? I want to get into like go back to Babylon and the magic stuff here in a second, but I just I want to leave you guys with this thought really quick. They have taught you to believe their official narrative is that dinosaurs became chickens. I think they laugh. I think that they're like laughing about this. Like they're like, wow, I can't believe we got them to believe that. I can't believe we got them to believe that. Can you imagine a dinosaur going from scales to feathers and going from running around like a crocodile? Like I want you to look at a crocodile. There's a video of a crocodile. A guy came to go with the crocodile and the, or the crocodile came to go get the guy and the guy hit the crocodile in the head of the frying pan. I saw it here on TikTok the other day. And I'm just imagining the crocodile becoming a bird and flying away. What does that process look like? It's insane. And they tell us we have a fairy that's tale. Real, that's what you call survival of the fittest. Um, so you take some big mo- big monsters at the top of the food chain, <laughs> and now they've been now they get eaten regularly by by us like constantly. Actually, I eat. I've killed so many dinosaurs uh, with my diet. It's uh, it's ridiculous. <laughs> yeah, specifically a dinosaur uh, protein <laughs> guy. So okay. Um, you mentioned the wizard thing earlier, and I think that's an important point. And then I was wondering if you wanted to get into any of the bizarre stuff like um, L. Ron Hubbard and uh, Jack Parsons. And oh, absolutely. Thing. You want me? You want me to? You want to yeah. go off? Go off my tangent on that? Yeah. Okay. So, so I, I started to. So once I was like I said, it kind of started when I was watching the Prestige, and this really kind of piqued my interest. Is like. So, you know, just obviously maybe this is how like the Holy Spirit works. and I'm just kind of like directed in this topic. So I'm just I'm kind of looking into the magic stuff. So I watched the prestige. I was looking at like Hocus Pocus and all this Disney satanic garbage. And so then I watched the prestige knowing, oh, yeah, I know. I knew they kind of told, you know, it, they, they tell a little bit about that stuff. So then I it really piqued my interest when they're like when you especially when you hear Tesla and Tesla is is talking to uh Like I said, when you realize it goes back to the sacred geometry, you realize. So you look, here's a, here's a nice list for you. Admit, tell me if you've heard of any of these guys. Okay, so we'll go Pythagoras. We'll talk about Leonardo da Vinci. We'll talk about Isaac Newton. You know, like I said, we yeah we get into Tesla. We get te- Tesla, Jack Parsons, rocket scientist, literally like yeah, in league with L. Ron Hubbard from Scientology. <laughs> Lester Crowley, wickedest man on the planet, yeah. uh, all this kind of stuff. And then, like I said, go to modern times now, and you have CERN. What is this place? Like, what, like, what are they doing there? You know, obviously, we hear all of these wild rumors about what they're doing here. But, I was like, well, I, but one thing I do know what they're doing is they're combining mysticism and science right in your face. I mean, they have a statue to Shiva right out front. They built this thing on the on a on the on the site where Antipas, now that we know, was burned in a brazen bull to Apollo, the destroyer. So they got one destroyer here, and then they got another destroyer right here. Just, just coincidence, I guess, right? And then the logo happens to be three of sixes. And then, and even when you actually hear their science, it's very abstract and it's, it doesn't really sound like science. Where they talk. About, I think one of the guys on there, um, one of the main guys, directors there, was talking about speaking to other entities. Oh yeah. Uh, have you ever heard? Have you ever heard that? Yeah. Well, they had a Wolf. they had a mock so they, they had a mock ritual out there, mm-hmm. and you're like, mock. so you're seeing this you're seeing this right out there in the open of like, what is this? Is this science? As I said, because if you're if you're thinking about like, your Richard Dawkins like atheist scientist, wh- shouldn't he be scoffing at the idea that they got a um, a statue of Shiva out there? Right. But yet they do. Right. Of all the gods, it's Shiva. And then uh, the, the, you said the mock sacrifice. 
it was leaked originally as not a yeah. mock, and then it was like, oh, it was just employees playing a playing a joke. Whatever. She was the goddess of destruction. She's at a portal. You know that mechanical eye thing they used it in Astral World. I think you used uh, that in the you video. Wait, you know what's you know what's interesting is I started to look up, and this and this, and this is something. This is gonna it's going to come up if you look for it. It's going to come up and come up again. I mean, of course, like I said, you can you guys follow me on Pinterest if you want to see some of the stuff I save on there now. But like, so you you think about Shiva and the way she's doing the dance. Mm. And have you ever, like have you ever seen it where they showed the dance like done up with ge geometry to the different mm. movements? So there you go. So, so she's so she's doing this. She's doing a certain movement in this in the thing, and you could take the geometry and you could line it up with like like her like her arms here, her legs here. And she's got like a tassel here, and right. it's like draw the star around it. It's right. like that's what this all ends up being. It's like it comes back to sa the sacred geometry where they get the numbers, they get the math from, and then of course you get into like the Tesla stuff, and it's like the three six nines, and so you wonder, like I said, that's what I'm saying. So that's what we're, me and Luke have noticed. It's like, so like I always talk about, so Luke, uh, so Paul talks about the Greeks and the Jews. So the Jews were all about the signs and wonders. And think Kabbalah. Think mysticism. Yeah, so there's signs and wonders. There's your magic. And then you have the Greeks who are into Gnosis. And the Gnosis is the science. So they're, they're doing science over here. They're doing mysticism over here. They're the same. They're the same because you have one group who's obsessed with numbers because they're mathematicians, and right. then you have another group who's obsessed with numbers because they're numerologists. Right. They combine the two, and like I said, the mainstream scientists or like the ones who are like the talking heads, they can't explain it to you because they don't understand it either, because there's some extra element to it. And I want to bring up this one, this couple, of these quick quotes I, I pulled up on Pinterest the other day. So you have. Um, so I think what is it? Uh, Arthur Arthur C. Clarke. I think he did like the 2001 Ooh. Space Odyssey. Dude, and he says, Arthur C. Clarke. Said, yeah, go ahead. He says any sufficiently advanced technology is indistinguishable from magic. Right. Arthur yeah. C. Clarke. So here, here's, a, here's another oh. one. Sorry, I'm gonna, I'll, I'll read you these, these couple more. So here's from Houdini. So of course now we're getting into like occult guys. Magic is the soul of science, not accepted by scientists because they can't understand it. Right. That's another fair one. And then I'll, I'll, t I'll top it off and I'll let you talk here, Luke. Is This is from a guy you might have heard of. His name's Anton LaVey. Did so you say I might this, have heard of him? Yeah, the, yeah. the, the guy yeah. who started the Church of Satan in America. Mm -hmm. Magic is never totally scientifically explainable, but science has always been, at one time or another, considered magic. It's like, these guys are not... And this is why a guy like Anton LaVey... Can go to these the same parties as these guys because right. he's one of them. So you mentioned Arthur C. Clarke and Arthur. Oh man, this isn't at all what we talked about talking about, but whatever. Um, Arthur C. Clarke wrote 2001: A Space Odyssey. Okay, 2001: A Space Odyssey was the movie that was being filmed from 1964 to 1968. 68. Uh, Apollo happened in 69. Uh, it was the largest budget at that point for a Hollywood movie, and it went over uh, budget in time by two years. A normal shooting schedule is less than two years. Uh, you know, two years start to finish. It was four years. Uh, it was all behind closed doors. Nobody could access it, uh, the studios, anything. So there's speculation that, um, that it was um, Kubrick, who was actually the one filming the Apollo landing, if they didn't go to the moon. I'm agnostic on it. I lean they didn't go. Who knows? But anyways, why do I bring this up? Arthur C. Clarke was the science uh, advisor for 2001 A Space Odyssey. And if you research him or you watch any of his interviews, he's sitting in his backyard. He's got the black monolith in his backyard and he's got this weird spacesuit looking thing and he's talking about his occult atheist you know thing and that he basically that the whole point of him making 2001 a space odyssey was to glorify the theory of evolution to show how man first murdered you know animal first murdered murdered in that first instinct and how it's the same as us going to space and yada yada, yada. very 
evil secularist um, evolution propaganda thing that you wouldn't even think about particularly. But talking about him knowing magic, the difference between magic and uh, what, what was the quote that Arthur C. Clarke said? Can you read it again? Oh, he said, um, let me see. Let me back up. He says, any sufficiently advanced technologies is ind- indistinguishable from magic. Right. Magic. <sighs> It's not often that I can't get the words out. Disney is NASA, and the Magic Kingdom is is exactly what you just said. It's exactly what you just said. It, it's indistinguishable m- magic and technology. And so, mm-hmm. for Disney to have both, for them to have uh, Disney, which is the Magic Kingdom, and you know, magic and magic is good. And then they also have Disney. And I made that uh, discovery or that uh, uh, that video that Cape Canaveral and Disney World were built at the same time and the CIA was getting the land for both. Very, and they're yeah, like, very, that's very, that's, that's, that's very convenient those things happen right. both at the same time. So where does this all tie into Arthur C. Clarke and how you can kind of bring this, you know, all together? During 2001 A Space Odyssey, there's an interview of him and I want to almost find it to show you guys. It's him in NASA's hangars saying, we're on the set of 2001 A Space Odyssey, and NASA has granted us unprecedented access to their instrumentation and their technology for this 2001 A Space Odyssey um, because, you know, we want to get the movie accurate or whatever. So it's Arthur C. Clarke in NASA walking around talking about how they use NASA as part of their uh, uh, filming of 2001 A Space Odyssey. It's indistinguishable. That's my point. And that was the point Mm -hmm. of it. Like... Like, on the chessboard analogy, and I don't want to go too far into this, but you know we're the pawns, the king and the queen are in charge. They, if this thing's a circle, where the, the king and the queen are the most protected. They're protected behind the pawns, and they're protected by their ranking officers. Who are the ranking officers? Next to the king and queen are the bishops, and then the knights, and then the rooks. Who are all these characters? We know we're the pawns. We're the soldiers that are put in the front of, of the war. To go to the you know the front line to go kill ourselves. It's white versus black. It's left versus right. Right. We're all worried each other's enemy, but we're actually identical. So um, we blindly go off. We can't we can't make any moves left or right. Right. With the first obstacle we hit, that's the end of it for us. We're done. We can't go around mm-hmm. it. We just go up and offer ourselves up. While the elites you know watch this uh, blood ritual sacrifice of us killing each other. Anyways, the between the <laughs> this is so crazy between the pawns. And then the back line, if you follow it like a circle, the first point of contact are the rooks. Who are the rooks? It's the military industrial complex. It's the law enforcement. It's basically the the, the force, right? So the military uh, and the police largely. Who's next? The knights. Who are the knights? The knights are, you know, they're the ones that can move like nobody else. They have this kind of amnesty. They can cruise around. The knights are information. Information coming and going. So... <clears throat> This would be um, CIA, uh, M, you know, uh, what, what uh, M4 or the KGB. This, you know, the the what's the Israeli one? The Mossad. So this Mossad. Would be the, this would be the intelligence, but it, intelligence is just information, right? It, it's the dissemination of information. So the knights in, in get the information through intelligence, and then they also put out the information through the media. So now you've got the CIA, and you've got media. So you've got the military industrial complex, law enforcement, then you've got the media and the CIA, and then the bishops. Who are the bishops? The bishops are the priests, the scientists, the magicians, the wizards, the whatever. What they do is they are the contact point with the king and the queen. And what they do is they take the agenda of the king and the queen, and they relay that information down the line to all the people. So whether it was like, you know, raw, like back in the day with Egypt, and it was like, there's going to be a solar eclipse. And if you don't, you know, sacrifice your children or give us all of your, you know, barley or whatever, the sun's going to be mad. Raw's going to be mad. It's going to go away. And there'd be solar eclipse. They're like, oh my God. So this would happen through the, through the priests or through this, through the scientists. And again, it was the Magi's at one point, the astronomers, it's been synonymous. And it's, it's the, it's the control of how we get the information down the line and it's to interpret the agenda of the king and the queen in a way that the people can't question them because they have the access to the technology. But this um, this NASA, Arthur C. Clarke, um, Large Hadron Collider, uh, observatories, you know, what this all comes down to 
is that they have the instrumentation, they have the knowledge, they have peered what they kept saying with the James Webb Telescope, which by the way has golden plates, you know, golden idol. That reminds me of the golden idol thing. It's got the six sided di uh, plates on there. It's got 18, it's got like 18 of them. But then there's like 18 of them too. 18 of them, which is six, six, and six, six right? Yeah. So, Right, so they just, and what did they say? The James Webb is going to go into space and look back in time and tell us our origins. And all these guys are talking about we're going to actually know how this happened. And this whole this is really this religious thing. One of the guys from NASA said it's really a spiritual experience because we're going to see the beginning. Well, guess what? They looked out there to the edge of the universe and they expected to see the beginning of the universe. Fully formed galaxies, fully formed galaxies, just like the ones in our just like our galaxy had that happen well surprise they were wrong they're not going to admit that they're going to wrong that, that, that they're wrong and they're just going to tell you you're a science denier if you don't believe them but it's it's the way that they control this information and then that's in the most innocuous sense and then the darker sense it's the john d's and the pythagoreans and the people that you're talking about who actually go into some sort of demonic state or fallen angel induced state mystery bab uh, the babylon working would be one of them and get information from the other side from entities who are around for creation who either saw it before they turned or understand how it works or whatever so these people go and they make the like you said the faustian deal and they get this access to the information so um i don't know I don't know if you want to add. I just it's it's too much for me well, to you process. Know, one thing I find interesting too, and so you, of course you like you think if you think back, obviously. Well, we'll, uh, we'll go to one of my favorite Thor quotes is when when Thor is telling Jane uh, Jane Foster, it's like, "You call it science, your an or your answers to call it magic. You call it science. Where I come from, they're one and the same." Well, obviously, at some point, it was one and the same. You know, here. But when you think about like probably after the age of enlightenment, when it's like, OK, dummies, we don't believe in God anymore. And then then it became unpalatable to be able to say you believe in science and God at the same time. Right. But, so you think about like so think back, like obviously to the times of Egypt, those guys are doing magic. You know, you could call it science then, but obviously they're trying to compete with Moses, who's doing miracles from God. And they're and they're obviously keeping up at, at for a time. Right. So then you think about like Pythagoras. Like I said, Pythagoras literally had a, had his own cult. I believe he was like somehow related to Apollo, of course, like they all do. And then, and then, so you even think about like so you go a little further, you know, further up into history, and then you get a guy like Tesla. Well, Tesla at this point, it's it's not, you know, think to, okay, Tesla and Jack Parsons, the things that they believed, they the the science community was probably embarrassed by the things they would say, they, and they weren't they weren't selling the they weren't selling the science as it being science. They were saying they got it through like mystic ways. And so when you right. think about it, so so if you if you ever wondered why Tesla died penniless like by himself, well, obviously they kicked him out of the club. You know, like right. Thomas Edison stole his best event to, to credit for all this stuff. They basically wrote, wrote him out of history books for a long time. And then what happened to Jack Parsons? Jack Parsons was working on like some movie sets building like explosives. This guy was like some kind of expert in this stuff. He blew himself up one day. Right. I mean, well, did he really blow himself up? Right. You know, yeah. like maybe not. But the interesting part is that these guys were obviously probably did more to advance the science than anybody like over in the 20th century. But you know what? Most people don't know who they are. You know, right. like I said, it's not until recently that the tests have kind of made a comeback with obviously like Elon Musk and them talking about him a lot more. But like, we, a lot of the technology we have is because of him. Right. But when you think about so, so I take that to in in the movie The Prestige. Like I said, you had you had magicians who were illusionists. They weren't doing magic. I mean, they were doing magic in the sense that, like Aleister Crowley talked about magic, magic changing your consciousness. So think about these scientists. That's the kind of magic they're doing. They're changing your consciousness to make you believe what you want to believe. They right. already said they you if you want to be tricked. Those are the guys who trick you. Right. Just listen to them. But then, but then you had, but then you had your wizards, and it's funny too. Even in the movie, Tesla had built this wizard machine that could do cloning, all kinds of weird stuff. Well, he wasn't out there advertising that. Well, you know what? So he gives his machine to the magician, 
And then the magician, the, it's, it's interesting. Hugh, Hugh Jackman takes this 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 machine to show this um this guy who owns a theater the trick. And when the guy sees it, and this is obviously it's very obviously a very important part in the movie. He like he knows instantly what he saw was real magic, and he's like he's blown away, and he's like, it's been years since I've seen real magic. And so what the guy told him, so it's interesting that he says, you need to dumb it down a little bit though. You like you need to actually sell it. Because you need to sell this as as a magic trick, not real magic. Because right. you know it's something else if it is. And so if you, if you kind of think about like that's kind of th- that that's a lot that we've probably seen, where like Jack Parsons, like I said, whether you believe we went to the moon or not, if we did, okay. Here's what I've always my dad always hates this when I tell him this because he like he he likes to believe that we went. Mm-hmm. He likes to believe that. So it's every now and then I humor him. But I said, you got two options. I said, either we didn't go, because we haven't gone back in like 50 years. Or when we went, we went back because of the guys from we got from Germany from the 30s. You know, those guys who uh, mm-hmm. were not so nice. The we Indian. use we use what they those occult those occultists learned mm-hmm. and this Satanist named Jack, Jack Parsons. Right. And so because mm-hmm. those guys are no longer around, we can't go back. So we went, so we went with witchcraft, fl- either went through witchcraft or we didn't go. Because like Parsons otherwise, it's, it's very hard to explain why we haven't gone gone back. Right. Didn't but yeah, so, so I find that interesting. So like, so, so is that what we're, is that what we're seeing now? Is like that they like these people in this community would have to brush, you know, broom out the real like the guys who did the real real the you know. Is you really think about it too? It's like so so Tesla obviously gave everything of himself to this to this thing he was he was like wow. you know, to, to the entities that he was like contacting and what happened to him he got used up and thrown away like garbage at the end this is the deal you know it's like so everybody's all all happy you know thinking about saying all these nice things about him well he died alone and penniless and it's like interesting right. in the movie that's what he, he's kind of prophesying that that's how he's going to end it's going to destroy him one day and it's like that's that's kind of where this leads you it's like hey you know, talk about a deal with the devil. You got to learn all these secrets. They brushed you off like a crazy person, and then and you got yeah got thrown away. I, I, ra- I rather think, or at least in my research, uh, Tesla, whatever he was doing, he ended up becoming a threat to the system. And so I, I know there was an altercation with uh, Westinghouse. I don't remember what happened, but you know the free energy thing. Maybe that was part of it. But basically. They kind of ruined him. I mean, he was already crazy. The, the closer you get to the truth and the closer you understand about how this reality works, when you start to understand that it's information-based and, uh, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a mathematical construct um, and you kind of peek behind the curtain. I, I've seen it a couple times. You, you could lose your sanity, absolutely. So well, he might have just gone well, you crazy. Kind of, you wonder, they might you wonder like, what do you, what do you, like, like I, I've, I've often, I mean, I've wondered recently, like, that if Tesla really did have like philanthropic like goals of like this idea of like free energy, like, you know, you can imagine him trying to take this knowledge that he would get for the good of society, whether, you know, it'd be good, you know, that's debatable. Obviously most people would say, you know, it could be used for good. Well, he's using this demonic energy, this, this, um, this, uh, you know, this knowledge he's getting for the good of humanity. But then he finds out the people he's actually working with, don't have society's best you know he's working with people who sell fossil fuels he's trying to create f- f- yeah, like free energy they're like um no you're not doing that <laughs> like, you know, what would you say free it's like no free is not good for business and it's like maybe i wonder if, how much that has to do with it if like the things he was working on were actually so legit that they said <laughs> now you're not doing that give his i give all his good ideas to um to to edison we're going to steal it from him. We're going to give it to Edison. And Edison right. is going to play ball because he's a magician. Right. All he's done is steal stuff from people. Right. And yeah, he'll sell, he'll sell exactly what we want and we'll, and we'll all get rich. Which you see, uh, you see that a lot, that the system promotes the thief, uh, whether it's Bill Gates or Zuckerberg, um, you know, multiple times Edison. Edison also 
had like a sacrifice the elephant thing that might have been a sacrifice we don't know oh, yeah, but that's like completely wicked yeah yeah he, he was evil but these are the kind of guys they want to promote so tesla may have had some altruistic thing he might have run into uh some people who you know he was basically like wow the this is a this this is a bad situation either way they prop up einstein and they you know discard uh tesla and part of it could just be uh, the simple idea of materialism or secularism versus uh, more of a spiritual, you know, information-based reality uh, take that Tesla had. You know, he was talking about the ether, and he was talking about, you know, all of these kind of concepts that were antithetical to this purely matter-based reality. It, people don't realize that it, for thousands of years, I mean, if you, if you look at the amount of secular atheists that there are today, which is, it's a new breed of human. This isn't something that, you know, secular, like rigid uh, secular atheism is, um, you know, it, it existed as like a one, maybe two percentile. I think today it's up to like five to 12 percent or something, but a very small minority in the history of humanity. So a atheists like literally believe that they're the ones that got it right. And everybody else pretty much since ever lived has been wrong up till this point. But th this was promote and it's gaining traction, you know, because a very strong and powerful group of people running this. But <clears throat> they needed Einstein to come in and say everything is space, time, and matter, okay? Mm -hmm. Because we are living in a material world, so I am a material girl. You know, they prop up Madonna, obviously, as well, but this is, it's literally, Madonna. it's a its a philosophy. There's no point, what does it say in the Bible? Eat, drink, and be merry, for tomorrow we die. Yeah. This, this is the opposite idea of there being an omniscient God who you will be accountable to. And so we needed to have the scientific basis to pull this fleece over the, uh, the eyes of humankind. And Einstein was 100% in bed with this, I, this group and, and, ha and pushing this narrative, uh, you know, special relativity, um, uh, really um, brings the secular um, uh, what scientific narrative into view and when quantum physics came out with the Copenhagen uh, uh, interpretation of quantum physics when they had that uh, meeting in Copenhagen with Niels Bohr and all this guy Einstein was actually there they basically said yeah quantum physics is a thing there's something going on that you could basically call supernatural we don't know what it is it's hypernatural it's something it's a technology we don't understand Einstein said, no, 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 I don't believe. And so he tried to unify um, his theory of relativity to quantum physics. He called it unified field theory, I think. Uh, and he couldn't do it because he was just dogmatically trying to explain this reality with the purely material uh, space, time, and matter thing. So anyways, um, they needed to have the right people in place to push the narrative. So this is the Darwins. This is the... Uh, so Darwin, uh, Einstein, uh, Hutton, and I guess I got the order. Let's see if I can get these order right. Hutton and Lyell. Have you ever read the quote that Lyell said about getting Moses out of science? Lyell, no, I have not. Get Moses out of science. Let me see this really fast. Yeah, well, you're looking that up. I want to say something real quick. You know what's interesting? And I and I just I just was pondering this thought the other day, and I thought. You know, obviously, there's a lot of these scientists who are, are now actually, like, considering that we could have been seeded by aliens. Okay. Maybe that's better than what didn't be a purely atheistic thing. There's nothing else. But I was thinking, like, just think about, is there a more satanic idea than thinking that you look out, you look out at the sky, look at the, all the things in the earth, and you're saying, we are the most advanced thing in this whole universe. You know what I mean? There's no one higher than us. Is that, you know what I mean, is that, is there literally anything more, is there any more hubris and arrogance and just ignorance to say, ain't nothing better than this? And of course, right. knowing how these, how wicked these people are, not only that, but I'm the most important one on this whole place. Right. Because that's how, you know, because that's what they're t telling you to do whatever, do what thou wilt. And they're saying, yeah, there's nothing higher than me in this whole universe. You know, what a bunch, yeah, like I said, that's, and so obviously find me somebody who agrees with me. Uh, so, yeah, give me a scientist to tell me that's true. Right. So you said this, how satanic it would be. I, I'm uh, When you start talking about the aliens and panspermia, 
this idea is pushed as pretty well accepted science. You just Google octopuses. Uh, octopusy. What how do you say it? Octopi. I guess it's octopi. Wait, wait, wait. So who are we talking about? You're not talking about uh, what was it? Kurt Eichenwald and his uh, his tentacle uh, fish. Yeah. Right, so uh, uh, octopi, I think, is the right way to say that. We. Um, they say they came from space uh, because they're aliens. That's like a new paper that just came they, out. You know so, what? You know they look like. You know what? If they they definitely look like an alien. There's, we're, I right, was just do. making a comment the other day. There was a picture of them. I was like, those it's, things are weird idea, though. Of the of the aliens uh, creating life, uh, which was the story of Prometheus. You've seen the movie Prometheus, right? Oh yeah, yeah. And yeah. Prometheus is the light bearer. They right? brought the fire to man. So that's obviously Lucifer. And we got the Prometheus. Yeah, Pr- thing. Prometheus, and, and of course the satellite Prometheus is Saturn, uh, satellite of Saturn. Right. Interesting and in, in, interesting enough. And uh, going back really quick to. Um, uh, Jack Parsons, he did create the Saturn V rocket working with the guys from Germany. So it's cra- crazy occult stuff going on there. Yeah. But anyways, so the, the panspermia thing, uh, it was L. Ron Hubbard who started that. Scientology actually, that's part of their religious system. Do you know that, right? You've seen like the South yeah. Park where it's like what the scientists and Scientologists actually believe that the guy came and dropped life into a volcano. Like So L. Ron Hubbard started this. So L. Ron Hubbard's working with Jack Parsons and Aleister Crawley as they're summoning demons, and then they get, they start a religion of aliens brought life to Earth. Well, if the aliens are actually fallen angels, now guess who's our creator? The fallen angels. Yeah. Nothing new under the sun. It's the same kind of thing that keeps happening over and over. So, okay, Lyell, um, Ly- Charles Lyell, who created uniformitarianism he wrote the the textbook uh, principles of geology it was, it was either him or hutton hutton was either his disciple but whatever it was hutton lyell that worked on this lyell saw himself as a spiritual savior of geology freeing the science from the old dispensation of moses what he said he wanted to free science from moses basically meaning you got to get this flood narrative out of here like this is this is what Mo- moses was genesis so the uh-huh. flood account. So you literally had guys uh, who were propped up by the system and and uh, you know propagating the secular anti Bible scientific history basically. And so uh, Lyell, Hutton, Darwin, Einstein, uh, and then more recently we have uh, uh, Hawkins and Dar- uh, Richard Dawkins and Sam Harris, uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson. Um, who's the guy? Christopher Hitchens. That guy's a oh, loser. Yeah. You know, Sorry what? To be let like me that, let me but... let me for a second. Let me stop you. So we brought up um, brought up uh, what's his name? Uh, it was the guy in the wheelchair. I don't know, I might just get, did a complete uh, brain fart. On. Yeah, Hawkins. So I was looking. I was doing some doing little did research, you research and, after we talked. Yeah. Well, I'm not not not. We won't even get into that. <laughs> but, uh, I don't want to though. But we'll see if it well, goes. Well, there. you know, we can we can if you want. Uh, but the interesting part was so. There is a there's a real clip clip like almost like a little Easter egg cameo thing in um in one of the Harry Potter movies. So they go into like I don't know where like the I don't know some Muggles <laughs> bar or something like that. Whatever <laughs> weird stuff they're doing in that. But anyways, they they I guess in the movies they talk about this wandless magic and it talks about these guys being the most advanced you know wizards there are. And so there's this guy and he's he's like I guess he's stirring his drink and he's and what he's reading is. He's reading a, a book, and of course, if you look at the cover, I mean, I guess my, I'm, I forget what the book was called, but it was a book from uh, Stephen Hawkins. Oh man! So that's so that's what they're, so that's again. So they're presenting it as Stephen Hawkins' wizard because the wizard is learning from him. Right. So you you talked earlier about the wizards and then the magicians. And I think that's mm-hmm. important because, like you said, and I haven't seen the movie The Prestige, but the wizards were, like, doing real magic. This could be John D. I would say I would encourage you guys to look into John D., but really it's really dark. Like, yeah, angel worship, angel magic, this stuff is really dark. <clears throat> My mom, who was a witch before meeting Jesus, um, was uh, really deep into a lot of that stuff. And uh, I remember her teaching my brother and I. Uh, to not study the names of the angels, to just don't don't associate. So I listened to it. I got in like a really angry attitude. It's really dark stuff. But anyways, um, <clears throat> the John Dees, these guys with the crystal balls and the scrying and getting the language of Enoch and stuff like these guys are wizards. 
But then you end up with the magicians, and these guys are like uh, Neil deGrasse Tyson, which is interesting. My wife is looking into it. I need to do it too. But apparently he worked as like a uh, usher or something at the observatory at one point. Like the guy's literally like a song and dance man. So you end up with these wizards doing real magic, like you said, real science. And then you have their understudies, which are the magicians, and these are the orators. And these are the guys that deliver yeah. the message, like Moses or and they're Aaron. The, or they're the showmen. They're the sh like, yeah, you think of Hugh Jackman, he did the other movie, The Showman. It's like, right. they're going out there and they're selling it. They're making it, they're making it fun. Bill Nye, the science guy, obviously not a scientist. Right. Bad actor. Right. But you, you have to have the orator, and they might have yeah. actually taken this when you and I were talking the other day. They might have taken it from Moses and Aaron because <clears throat> this idea of the, like, you have extrovert, introvert, you have that balance, you have that juxtaposition of the two different personalities. The introvert is usually very intelligent and kind of troubled, even, and the extrovert is like more palatable, digestible, and very good communicator, whatever. But you have this with um, uh, Darwin, Charles Darwin wasn't a good speaker so he leaned on a guy named um what is his name uh thomas henry huxley mm -hmm. thomas henry because you got you got to imagine right you got this darwin guy he's like i saw these beaks and they were all different sizes therefore we come from chimp you know like this <laughs> see can't you see my theory and nobody had ever believed such a ridiculous thing in the history of the world how does a guy with a theory in a book changed the world, literally changed how 85% of the people in this country believe in the theory of evolution, which is crazy because 10 years ago, it was less than 50%. That's how quickly this thing's going off the rails. Anyways, um, Thomas Henry Huxley was the orator, and he was the guy who persuaded Europe to believe this thing. He would actually go and have debates. It's cool that we could have debates today, and this was happening 200 years ago in Europe with uh, Catholic priests, maybe even Jesuits, and he would tear them up understanding the science and they would have like public square debates and Thomas Henry Huxley would look, make them look bad. What's crazy is that Thomas Henry Huxley is the grandfather of the author of Brave New World, Aldous Huxley. That's backwards. Mm -hmm. That fix it? Just kidding. Um, Aldous Huxley... <laughs> is uh, the grandson of Thomas Henry Huxley. Where did Huxley get the motivation for Brave New World? It, it wasn't a prophet. Oh, what a great idea. He was in the, in the inside. And what you had was Thomas Henry Huxley and all the eugenicists uh, of the time creating this secular world. And, um, you know, they, they were very much racist, m many of them. They thought that the Europeans were the height of evolution. Well, whether they believed that or not, they probably actually believed in Adam and Eve, but they just wanted to control people, whatever. We don't know. But, you know, this idea of eugenics and Galton, um, the, the, this was it, when Huxley wrote the Brave New World book, he was giving you inside ball what they were thinking about. And I did a, I did a, a show on my VOR radio uh, podcast that's on my YouTube going deep into an interview that Aldous Huxley had with Mike Wallace. And they knew... I mean, what they knew in the 50s. And he said something that we'll, I'll never, for, hopefully never forget. But uh, he said two things. One thing he said is that we have uh, social engineering and propaganda down to such a science that we can make people think whatever we want, basically. They, uh, if you know the guy uh, Bernays, Bernays is the one who got women to smoke because women weren't smoking at the time. And the, the uh, tobacco industry realized that if women smoked, that would really open up their customer base double it basically uh so they did the torches of freedom thing of course torches of freedom in new york and they invited all the press down and they had all of the models smoking and walking down and it was very taboo and it was a sensation in the world and so basically bernays knew that if beautiful young women were rebels and broke the stigma and the this dogma of like you know i've got to be a subservient housewife i'm like this liberated like badass whatever that it would take and it sure did it took like wildfire and uh you know lyle's uh, not lyle um bernays is also the reason that you eat bacon because he said he set up this uh propaganda thing they needed to sell more bacon he worked for the pork industry and bacon and eggs bacon and eggs came from bernays anyways huxley was talking about how they have it down to an absolute science between bernays and goebbels and all the different propaganda artists that they had they knew they could sway people and so wallace had said something about 
the democracy and Huxley laughs. He goes, a democracy isn't a thing because democracy, the idea of a democracy is the mass of people. People get to vote based on their ideology, but we control their ideology. We make them believe what they want to. So anyways, in this thing, he, so that's one of the things he said. He laughed about the democracy. He's like, we can make you vote for whatever. It doesn't matter. Another thing he said is we figured out our mode of operation. And now that we understand what we can do, which is this one, which is, which is the, whether it's a false flag attack or social engineering or whatever, he said, we know how humans will react. So now we know that as our technology increases, the effect will be stronger. This is the thing that Aldous Huxley was talking about in like 1954. And he was the grandson of Thomas Henry Huxley. And then if you look into it further, O.C. Marsh, who is the guy who came up with the equine evolution, he was funded by J.P. Morgan, which is unbelievable. But of course he was, and he was a leading paleontologist. Uh, the guy that came up with Piltdown Man, <laughs> dude, you got a cowboy hat on and he looked great and you can't even see it. Um, uh, the Piltdown Man was a, was a hoax. Uh, Nebraska Man was a hoax. Haeckel was a hoax. It's all misinformation and anti-science and uh, by the priests of the religion of science. Sorry, go ahead. No, it's no, you're, no, you're, I mean, if you really think about it, even when you're talking, when he's talking about the democracy thing, it's like, again, back to the magicians. It's like, this is an illusion. It's like the illusion of like, a, a, like free and fair elections, the illusion of a democracy. It's right. like, even just like, just knowing like your two choices are, again, it's like two wings of the same bird. You're going to, they're getting you to the same place eventually anyways. It's like, you know. Or, yeah, it's like, because, you know, people are going to be corrected on this all the time. It's like, say, we live in a democracy. It's like, it literally is not a democracy anyways. It, it's it's a it's a republic, you know, it, yeah, it's a democratic republic, which is different because, again, you vote for these people, but they can still go do to walk, go to, up to Washington, and do whatever the heck they want. And they do. That's all they do. And it's again, so they're they're leading us to the same place. And it's like people think they've got a hand in it. And it's like it's like it's mm -hmm. almost just like. It's almost like, it's like playing, you know, playing sports with you, like a, a little child and just thinking, letting him win a, a couple right. of things and think it's like it's fair. But it's like he Did doesn't you see know that TikTok video uh, came out the last few days where it showed <clears throat> the graph of what the voting uh, public, uh, the sway that they have in the outcome as far as laws being passed and any decisions being made and how it was basically null and then the same chart as it related to the rich and special interest they determined everything so what's the did, did, did they did they did they chart the cfr <laughs> like the, the council council of foreign relations oh it was that they're, they're at, are they betting a thousand over over the cfr hey we should do this and uh right. a couple years later that's what we do so what they do is they say uh you have a voice and uh, your voice matters and you have to vote and you get this, whether it's rock the vote or, you know, whatever I voted sticker. <clears throat> and it's a great idea because you would like to live in a world where you did have a voice, but you don't. And so w what they do is they're going to put their people in, they're going to do their thing. And the, by telling you, you had a voice, then when your guy isn't in, you go, well, I need to vote harder next time and I need to get my friends to vote. And then you feel like I screwed up because I just didn't vote hard enough. And so, um, you know, everybody gets all fired up and we just keep voting. But it, it, the pushing this uh, narrative of freedom of, uh, you know, that we have uh, we have a say is just to basically because the, because if we knew that we didn't have a say, we'd be pissed off and they don't like pissed off people. Harder to control pissed off people. This white glove approach to social engineering has been a really impressive thing that they've accomplished. Um, but it, and it goes to, I guess I will, I don't know if we can keep going, but it goes back to, to me that the priests of the religion of science have, um, sold us all a secular lie. All of creation, all of creation talks about the God of the Bible, the history of the Bible, the, 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 the scientific accuracy, the historicity, the oral tradition. Everything in scripture is, is intuitive and logical and what we have seen. And this version of anti-Bible science in history um, is a new phenomenon in the history of human uh, existence. And I, 
I'm, I don't say I'm scared, but 85% of the people in this country believe in the theory of evolution. And like Bill Nye and those guys say, eventually it'll be 100%, you know, our, they are getting rid of uh, the Christian view. They're getting, they're writing God out of his story. And they're using what I would say is, is sleight of hand. Um, and, uh, you know, just a, a modernized version of the magic that they've always used to do it. Yeah, no, no question. You know, I'm, of course, I've been uh, doing a, a little reading into the uh, a nice, a nice little topic of the Illuminati. So I was reading a little bit about, about like the secret societies, and of course, more like more or less how they think about all of us. And it's not, right. and this is not going to shock anyone. They think the masses are stupid, and then they 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 can't they can't be privy to the information they have. So they literally have to spoon feed everybody what they're supposed to right. believe. And so this is one Thank of this, these things where it's like. You know, I give people a lot more credit than that. As we said, it, it, it pissed me off when I when people are saying that the people in, you know, in the Americas or whatever, like, you know, the Marigos Vespucians, you know, they didn't know anything. And right. it's like, these people are not unintelligent. You know, right. I'm not going to say that, you know, we can look at TikTok and we can question everyone's IQ. But, you know, people are not stupid. You know what I mean? Right. I think that's a, I actually respect the people's, you know, their intellect. But most people don't use their brains. Like most people are not using their brains. They're allowing other people to think for them. And I think this is one thing that I couldn't stress to you guys enough is the fact that ask questions, be like, be curious. I mean, I think that's really, right. that's the, that's a frustrating thing with, with, with the times we live in. People are not curious. They don't look into things. They don't want to know. Again, go back to what they were saying in the prestige is that people, you can trick people who want to be tricked. Unfortunately, People want to be tricked because the things they're trying to sell you, you realize it's like you just have to ask, ask a couple questions like, you know, you are smart enough to understand what they're saying. You know what I mean? Like, especially like you're saying, there's a jellyfish on uh, the Rocky Mountains. How did it get up here? Right. And you're like, I, and then if they give you a BS answer, just like I always do, I'm like, that doesn't make any sense. You got anything right. else? Because I'm not going to believe I don't believe that. And I said, so anything, if anything, you call into question their theory and you can obviously establish the theory because there's counterpoints. There's a, there's a, there's a jellyfish on Mount, uh, on Mount Everest. Ask questions, be curious. But like I said, really, people are not dumb, but people are wicked these days. People, people want to believe the lies and that's troubling. And I think that's why when you realize that when we're, when we are, we're not ref wrestling against flesh and blood here, we're not wrestling against I'm smarter than you. I'm gonna. I'm going to debate you into to my my point of view. What you really have to understand is, like as Christians, we need to share the truth. We need to share the truth with love. We need to we need to get to the heart of the matter, and I mean that literally. You need to get at people's hearts and make it understand. It's like, listen. Can you guys, uh, JT is paused. And God's, oh. you know, God's promises are eternal. And they, they're saying, eat this stupid bowl of soup right here. This is all it is, dummy. This is as good as it gets. Eat, drink, and be merry. Eat that bowl of soup. And there you go. God wants so much more for you than that. Don't believe the lie. So you froze for a big chunk of that. I figured it was me. Oh, I was no. Kind of trying, yeah. <laughs> I, speech, uh, speech, uh, that stinks. It's the, it started good and it finished strong. I imagine the middle was good, too. I don't know where exactly I lost <laughs> you. But uh, I would add that the critical thinking thing, um, you said, you know, question. It's good to be skeptical and to not just blindly trust the system, whatever that would be, your teachers, your politicians, the people who run the businesses, your pe your priest. Whoever, don't just blindly trust anybody because, like you said, people can be wicked. But I would say that's very hard for people because um, you you go to school at a very young age, and this is really the parents uh, parents need to do better uh, and and think critically and really trust their intuition. It's not a natural thing to just hand your child over when they're four or five years old and go whatever, do whatever, get get them back to me by five maybe or six. It doesn't matter. I'm just gonna let them watch two hours of TV and then put them to bed anyway so they can get back to school tomorrow. But um, when you sit there and you're forced to sit in line 
and look at forward to the teacher and agree with everything you do. And, and if you disagree, you're in trouble. And if you push back, you're in trouble. And if you agree, you get a good grade. You literally change the ability of the brain uh, behaviorally. Like uh, the neuroscience of the brain is actually changed in from going to like, hey, are you telling the truth, teacher? Can I trust you, teacher? To Yes, the more accurately I hear what you're saying and just agree and spit it back, the better grade I get. You train mm -hmm. the human brain to not ask questions and to obey authority. This is what, you know, when the General Education Board, uh, you know, adopted the Prussian compulsory education model, they wanted widget makers. They wanted people who didn't ask questions. What did Rockefeller say? I don't want a nation of thinkers. I want a nation of workers. He wasn't kidding. He wasn't kidding. He needed people because, because if, if you go, if you start going, I have to go to school and that costs me $50,000. And by the time I pay that off, that's $70,000. And then I have to buy a house on a 30 year mortgage. And that's going to cost me, you know, I'm going to buy it for 200,000, but I pay back 500,000 and, oh, I just have to go to the military and go fight a war. I don't want to be in. And, oh, you start asking these questions your problem it's it's not it's not in the best interest of the guys with the money in power for you to start asking these questions i mean and this is a thing like if you're if you're a believer <clears throat> same thing with going to church and i don't want to i don't want to lead you astray if you got a good church whatever I, I get it but we're under the same kind of programming where where we go uh, we go to the priest and it's like well, you probably can't understand the Bible on your own, so let me explain it to you. And then you end up with, you know, your Presbyterian or your Baptist or your whatever. Somebody said in our uh, Bible study last night, if you are uh, more interested in identifying yourself as a brand of Christianity, a sect of Christianity, rather than just saying you're a Christian, a follower of Christ, you, you might want to look at your priorities. But where would you have learned that? Because you go to the guy and he goes, well... We're Pentecostal and we're right and they're wrong. And yeah. in my interpretation of scripture and whatever, the point, like you have to think critically of all of these things. You have to, the people in charge have been in charge because we were programmed to not question them and they don't necessarily have our best interests in mind. They might, they might be indifferent. We don't know, but it's good to be skeptical. And I can tell you this, me as an individual, me as a dad, me as a friend, if you come to me and you go, hey, I've got these concerns, I'm immediately going to listen to you. And if I didn't, if I said, JT, are you questioning me? Are you, you got a problem with me? What does that say about my character? What am I hiding? Mm -hmm. What am I hiding if you can't be critical of what I'm doing and I can't give you a response? And I always say this, if I can't give you a response to what I'm doing and I, a good justifiable response, I need to look at why I'm doing the thing. And if the system had the same, what, philosophy, I would feel a lot better about it, but they don't. And trust me, as a guy who went conspiracy and now I'm Christian apologetics, the system doesn't want to hear me questioning them. Amen. Yeah, so, well, you know, it, they always say like that, that the, the truth doesn't mind being questioned, but a lie is going to be really upset when they're questioned. I mean, it's, right. just you see that in your daily life, is like when somebody asks you a question, you see how see how quick a defensive person would get when they've lied to you, right? You know, they'll. I mean, you, you can see it instantly. And I was just thinking back when you were saying that, like, just think about when when uh when Paul's with the Bereans and they're like they're checking what he said. Mm -hmm. And so what does Paul do? He gets super pissed because he's right. No, he actually says he commends them right. for checking to check. Like he didn't mind because he knew he told them the truth. Right. And when they when they look when they checked back and they found out he was he was correct, you know what they believed, and I think that's like I said I think that that's one of the greatest things I can tell you guys is that that I know Luke and I will say we respect you enough of look what we're ta telling you look into it don't trust me like right. I said don't trust me with the Bible at all but I'll tell you what it says and I'll tell you go read it when I'll tell you what I said it read what it read it for yourself but I'm going to tell you what it says. And that's what I'm saying. We will look into these things. That's what I'm saying. Like, you know what? Going back to the, the Vespucci thing, it's like, don't trust me. Go look into it. Go find it. Go find out if you can prove me wrong by saying he like Vespucci, you know, it was named after him. Yeah. Or go see what I said about the Maracu, you know, the Maracu. Like, you tell me what you think. 
Right. I mean, the, the main point is like, I don't mind if you go check my research, please do, you know, cause I want it to, I, cause I care more about the truth than I care about just being right. So the, I didn't think I was going to be able to squeeze this in there, but there's a TikTok creator on here. Uh, his name is science is real. <laughs> he's got 500,000 followers and he, I guess it was blasting me in videos and tagging me and stuff. And I just wasn't aware of it. And, uh, so I finally got on and, and read it and I just said, yeah, let's do a debate. Let's go. And anyways, is one of his comments on one of my videos or one of his videos, I'm not sure was deleted. And I don't, there's 2,300 comments on the video. I don't go, I'm not going to go read mm. every comment. So I don't know how it got deleted. If it was on somebody else's thread, whatever. But anyways, the guy says, Mr. Debate Me Bro, um, ha deleted my comment because this is how indoctrination works. They they stifle anyone who opposes their message, and I'm like, have you ever been in my life? Like, I I intentionally debate with atheists, and people can. The only person I would ever block is someone that we're concerned is going to maybe you know report us or whatever. But all my comments are just constantly people blasting me, people engaging with them, whatever. So the irony that the guy whose name is Science is real is telling me who's someone who questions the system and all of my videos start with is adam and eve you yeah. know our real mother did this happen will this happen anyways i watched his response and he said we know and science this and science that so he's accusing me of indoctrination a guy who asks questions and his name is science is real and meanwhile uh you know <laughs> it's just <clears throat> the irony of a guy saying science is real you can't question it uh, and saying that I'm indoctrinating people. And then he was saying that I was, uh, I make my TikTok videos for kids. Anyways. Well, I mean, again, Whatever. it's just like, and this is, and this is, I said, this is one of those things that probably a long time ago, you know, just made me realize that these people are just full of it. Cause you're just like, did I respect humility? Because, you know, cause we, cause we know as men, we can't know everything. You know what I mean? So when they start talking about stuff that happened that, that's untestable, when they start talking in billions and in billions of light years, billions of billions of years, they start talking about things they can't know, and they start talking. They start watching these science shows, and they're like, with no humility of saying, "This is our best guess. This is a this is a good this is the best theory we have, but we're not really sure." You know, you would you would respect those people a lot more. But when they when they start talking in this is, this was, this is right now, and all these, these these certain terms, you immediately to know, wait a minute. Like, yeah, my first question is like, how could you know that? And then when they don't give you an answer, okay, you're lying then. <laughs> like you're, you know what I mean? Because you can't, you should be able to answer a basic question like that. And the fact that they can, it's like your, your buddy, what was your other buddy was saying that, um, what was he, uh, he was saying, so your, your other friend was, so science is real, even though I said it's funny, Google science is magic and you'll get a, like a billion results. <laughs> it's like, it's real, but real. it's also magic. You know? So we, we got there. So science is real. Science is magic and magic is real. It's a circuit. Right? Yeah, right. exactly. And obviously you have all these guys who, who are actually, all these guys who they, on their I love, I F and love science uh, web pages right. are full of occultists. <laughs> like how many, how many of the, how many of the rock star scientists literally are in a secret society putting the manic magic pentagram on their hands. It's so, like, it's, it's, it's unbelievable. Uh, this is the last thing I'll say. And if you want to close, you can close, but, um, yeah. science teaches, and these things have all been validated by uh, talking with, uh, astrophysicists, cosmologists, uh, mathematical theoreticists. Um, science teaches that, uh, there are an infinite amount of universes, not just one. Forget about where every all of the matter that came into existence for our universe, where that came from, how it happened. It was compressed into a dot and expanded, whatever. Forget that whole thing. There's an infinite amount of universes, unlimited, billions and billions and billions and billions of universes. So not just one universe. It's a, it's a, it's a multiverse of madness, um, yes. <laughs> you could say. They also, uh, their explanation for why we collapse the wave in quantum physics is that every time we have a thought or an action, uh, we create a new entire reality. 
Uh, it's called the Many Worlds Theory, made popular uh, by a guy named Everett, and it's the most accepted secularist view of the collapsing of the wave. So we believe that God created this reality. We believe that the Bible is history, and we're octopi came to the earth through space, rode through space on a comet, however long that took. The nearest planet is seven light years away. I don't know how they stay, whatever, cryogenically frozen, frozen, through our atmosphere, hit the ground, jumped off, became octopus. It got by, I said that word wrong earlier. Uh, yeah. They believe that m uh, monkeys uh, rafted on uh, thatch, on like uh, vegetation thatches. Um, they believe that there's an infinite amount of universes, and inside of those infinite amount of universes, every thought we make creates an infinite reality, infinite amount of realities inside of the infinite universes. So, hey, we all believe something, but, you know, don't question the priest of science. Question the Bible, but don't question the priest of science, because they got it straightened out in 2022. Yeah, at least yeah, at least uh, at least there's no faith involved in what they believe. Right. Yeah, it's just science. <laughs> at least science you can you can rest in all that science there, but it involves no faith at all. <laughs> yeah, the the multiverse of 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 octopi is right. uh is is don't trust that. Right. No, but it's the it's multiverse interesting. Multiverse of octopi. <laughs> yeah, but you know, so yeah, I'll I'll just close with this is like, listen, any anything that's scientific that cannot be questioned is not science. All right. right. By their by their own definition. So if you can't if you start question if you question them and they get upset, that's dogma. That's not science. Right. Like I said, and which 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 is interesting is when you look into God's word, the Bible, it, you can question it. Go ahead and question it. But be willing to look. Right. You know, be willing to look. Because you know what? You'll find out that it's true. It's it's more true than anything out here. And I said, obviously that's that's why Luke and I we're often we're so often right is because we do have a guide of what we can we can check everything against. And listen, like and this and, and how do we know that the Bible's true? Because once again, prophecies that are thousands of years old, thousands and thousands, they first of all, there's a lot that have already come true. They continue to come true. And if you if you if you're paying attention, it's all coming true right now. And like I said, as this world gets is the, the truth is shifting sands to everyone else. You don't know what you're allowed to say anymore. You don't know, you don't know what's true anymore. It's all relative, right? The theory right. of relativity, whatever you believe is true whenever you want it to be. Wow. Except, you know what? You know, and I know, that ain't true. You know that there is a truth, and that's Jesus Christ. And that is a fact. That yeah. is, you know what? That's science right there, because that's the truth. And I said, you'll find out. You'll look over every other corner. Like I said, these guys are going to say that there was a big bang, bang the cradle. Now they're saying it was octopus or octopi. <laughs> octopi, yeah. So you know what? You like I said, that's how that's how shaky the the ground that they're talking about is science. Don't believe don't believe the lie. Amen, brother JT. Love having you on, man. Yeah, absolutely, man. Yeah, definitely. Let's, we'll have to we'll have to do it again. You know, maybe they are trying to build a portal to hell at CERN. about damn time. Yikes. Yo, y'all hear the new Space Force song? It's fire. Hocus Pocus 2 is out, guys, finally. Which has been is what will be. That which is done is what will be done. There's nothing new under the sun. 